Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hasbunallah wa neema rakeel. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Wednesday, the 20th of November. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. Thank you to Sonar Fashions in Tamale for my outfit 0246590162. And also to all of you who share content, who like it, who distribute it across the world to the wonderful world. Thank you very much indeed. This morning, I want to begin from those who were displaced by the dam spillage. An act that I call to a certain extent, very irresponsible. And for the fact that we find English to explain everything in this country. We feed children with rotten rice. We find English to explain it. We have people displaced for more than a year. We find English to explain it. This is in Bakba. Right? This is in Bakba. After one year, we have not finished the project. But you find people explaining with English and telling you nice things and explaining nice things to you. And, and sometimes you don't, you ask yourself, so the people who have been displaced, and you know that I said, so Bwachi, a minister for, uh, he was then minister for works. He came to tell us that, oh, we will fix the Keta, uh, all those places. We, we, we will fix the, 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 what do you call it, um, the sea defense wall for them. It will happen. What has happened to all those ones? And somebody said that if those people in the Volta region and the OT region had been part of the Ashanti region and Bono regions, and somebody, had, people have said it so many times, they would have been, their issues would have been dealt with fast, fast, fast. We are only explaining English to the people more than one year after the people were displaced, not because of their own will. We have not finished accommodation for them. And people are still sleeping in tents. And everybody is okay. More than one year. Let it sink in. More than one year. Let it sink in. And nobody is complaining. Everybody is okay. We'll do press conferences. We'll do meet the press. We will, we will commission things. And it is only in this country that we go and commission overpass. Then chiefs and everybody will, they will share meat pie and Fanta and Coke. And then everybody is happy. When I say we are not serious, they say, why are you saying we are not serious? But are we serious? Where is our social protection standpoint? Where is it? That more than one year. Go to Apiati. We have still not finished helping the people of Apiati. Go to Kaswa, where somebody did some blasting or whatever. Go there and go and check. We just don't care about our people. Because people are happy. People are okay. People are... Those people who are supposed to deal with the issues, they themselves, they are okay. They are fine. They are okay. So they, so they don't care about the, the, the other people. They don't care. They are okay. Another case in point, Napco. And I spoke with Nanako Mia here. He said that the Napconians have to be paid because it's becoming an embarrassment to government. He said that to me more than four months ago. The Napconians have not been paid. I know, and I told you that they were met by Dr. Anyas at the YEA. Yes, yes, oh, they were met at the YEA. I told you about it. And the Napconians have come to confirm it. Now they say, release our allowance now, or you lose our vote. Napco was a big, a big conversation in the last election. They were promised permanent jobs by no less a person than the president of the republic who today is endorsing Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. 
And NAPCO is a blot on the government. They have put their numbers out there. Frank is the National Secretary of Connaught. Say, release our allowance now, or you lose our vote. Former NAPCO trainees to government. Today, the government doesn't talk about NAPCO as an achievement. Show me the video where they met with the creme de la creme. Dr. Anyasu has been silent. He's, he's a member of the Dr. Baumia campaign team. He met the NAPCO officials. Right? Play the video. He met. This is a meeting. When I tell you we were there, we were there. When I tell you we know, we know. Do you understand? They met. They were promised. They told them that the portal will be opened, that they need to go and fill the, a certain form. They finished filling the form. Sikano Amba. So how do you put people together in a room and deceive them to go and deceive their followers? How do you do that? No, I'm asking a simple question. How do you do that? Because NAPCO was a big conversation. NAPCO is said, well, we have created 100,000 jobs. You remember that? Meanwhile, at the time, Ken Oforiata had gone to parliament to say it was 97,373. You don't approximate figures when you are paying people 700 Ghana cities or 699. You don't do that. But we did that. We accepted that in this country. The record in Parliament was showing another figure of 97,373. But the government was consistently quoting 100,000. And Dr. Anyas was leading that charge. Today, the NAPCO pe personnel are owed more than seven months of their allowances. And nobody has been paid. And everybody is okay. Today, when the government talks about its achievements, even on the performance tracker that has been, uh, uh, that has been pulled down, the government doesn't talk about NAPCO again. But you say, they say you are NDC. Who brought NAPCO? Who brought NAPCO? Who, who used this as a political tool? Who endorsed it? Who used this as a conduit to win votes to assure people that we will give you jobs if you vote for us? Four years down the lane, they have not. Put, put the first one for me. Let's read. Let, let's read English. Yes. Let's read English. And I will read for you. This is dated the 15th of November. Organized union of former NAPCO trainees. Their post office number is there. Their phone number is down there. We can trace it and track it and call them if you doubt it. General public notice. Update on NAPCO trainees' arrears payment. The general public, particularly the media fraternity, is hereby informed about the latest development regarding the payment of NAPCO trainee arrears. Key updates. NAPCO virtual portal being activated after a prolonged period of inactivity. Two. Validation for the arrears com commenced on the October 26, 2024, following a meeting between the union and NAPCO CEO, Dr. Ibrahim Anyas, along with other government officials. And I told you that meeting happened at YEA. You didn't believe me. Now this is verification. Validation process has been conducted in modules. Four trainee, uh, four trainee validation remarks on their dashboard Read timesheets received and being vetted by MIPs. We appeal to the public and the media fraternity who have demonstrated unwavering support for trainees concerned to be aware of these updates. This will empower them to demand accountability from the government if their arrears remain unsolved within seven to 14 days. We will not accept any more broken promises, especially after the unfulfilled commitments made in October 2020 regarding the scheme mechanization, disappointing career pathway transition process. The leaders of the trainees union has requested or have requested that NAPCO management provide a timeline for completing the validation and payment of outstanding arrears. Regrettably, 
No progress has been made regarding the request or this request. It is essential that the public and the media are informed about these developments to hold government accountable and scrutinize their credibility regarding youth uh, job creation promises if the unexpected happens in the next week or two. The unexpected, they, they are talking about elections. Eric Nanatech is public relations officer. David Peterson is organizer. Kojo Opong, not in Kruma, is secretary. And they have put their numbers and everything there. There's another letter. Find me that other letter. And these are able-bodied men and women who were promised jobs. But you see, the NAPCO people are their own problem. Oh. Because when they say, oh, we are looking for our money, let's go on a demonstration. The same NAPCO people will say, oh, you are giving the government a bad name, so let's not go and demand for our money. The same NAPCO people, they are their own problem. Because they are more partisan than being nationalistic. That's the, that's the whole story. This is also from the Coalition of National uh, NAPCO Trainees. Same post office number, 19 November 2024. Re, Ghana deserves a leader like Baumia to help the nation rise quickly. Former President John Ajikum Kufo. Former President Kufo. Your endorsement of Dr. Baumia as a leader who can help Ghana rise quickly prompts us to bring to your attention pressing concerns about his sustainability, uh, suitability for leadership. Mr. Former President, we hope you are not aware that Dr. Baumia, who supervised the NAPCO scheme, failed to pay trainees nine months arrears. In June 2024, the Vice President solemnly promised to collaborate with the finance ministry to settle these arrears, which dates back to 2022. However, months have passed, and this promise remains unfulfilled. Mr. Former President, how can we trust a leader who could not manage the NAPCO program effectively? With the greatest of respect, we urge you to utilize the same enthusiasm you demonstrated in endorsing Dr. Baumia to Ghanaians and advise him to pay vulnerable trainees their nine months arrears during this challenging period. Mr. Former President, Dr. Baumia promised permanent employment to NAPCO trainees, but this promise never materialized. Similarly, his commitment to settling all arrears associated with the scheme remains unfulfilled. With this bad record, how do you believe, do we believe that Ghana needs a leader like Dr. Baumia to help the nation rise quickly? They're asking a question. Gentle giant, they're asking a question. Former President Kufo, with the maximum respect, NAPCO trainees expect you to utilize the same influence you employ to endorse Dr. Baumia to Ghanaians and counsel him along with the MPP, to settle all outstanding arrears associated with the NAPCO scheme, which operated under the direct supervision of Dr. Baumia. As a respected statesman and former president of Ghana, your voice carries significant weight. We hope you will uh, use your influential outfit to advocate for the welfare of the youth and NAPCO trainees as well. Thank you. Signed by Nana Tichi Eric. Public Relations Officer, Connat to all media houses. And they, they are speaking to our father, the former president. They are asking questions. That how do we trust such an individual who has promised, who has failed to fulfill his promise, who is still promising to create jobs, who is still promising to do what he has failed to do consistently. How do we trust such an individual, especially coming from a statesman like former President Kufo, who is assuring us that he is the best man? That's what the NAPCO people are asking. There are over 97,000 people, not 100,000. They are asking a simple question. That the man promised us that he will pay us our arrears. Nine months. He has not paid us our arrears. And the NAPCO has sat right in front of me here and said that it is an embarrassment. They have to be paid. Nana Kumia is co-chair of the, of the Baumia campaign. So how does President Kufo now, respectfully, now as the NAPCO people are asking you, sir, that how do you want us to trust such a man who has told us that he will pay us, but has not paid us, and continues to give us vibes? 
every opportunity, he takes the microphone, he gives us vibes. Put the flyer up there again. He says, release our allowance now or you lose our vote. Maybe President Kufo is not aware. But the NAPCO people say, we have worked for the thing. You have asked us to come and fill forms. We have done that. You have asked us to go and, oh, onto a portal. We have done that. Why can't you give us our money? Why? 3FM, they ask you a very simple question. And I can tell you on good authority that most of the people who are NAPCO beneficiaries are MPP people. I'm telling you. I, I talk to them all the time. I'm in constant communication with them all the time. Most of them are MPP people who are disappointed, actually. Most of the NAPCO people, they are MPP people who are disappointed, actually. And that is why when they say they should go on demonstration, they say, oh, no, oh, good party, then you must say, so they don't want to go. I'm telling you on a good authority. When I told you that they had met them at YEA, you doubted it. Now they have come to confirm it. And we were at that meeting. You won't find my ugly face, but we were at that meeting. Johnny's bite is everywhere. We attend. We enter. We ask the questions. We film. We record. We are there. So this morning, this is an appeal to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and to Dr. Nyas to redeem their image. And the NAPCO people are asking President Kufo, are you not aware, sir, that these people have told us lies and they have deceived us over and over again and they have not been able to pay us and some people are so devastated? Are you not aware? They're asking a simple question. Are you not aware? Napconians, they say release our allowance now or lose our vote. Are you not aware, sir? So when you come and you tell the people that he's the best pair of hands to represent Ghana, to take Ghana to the next level, the young people who are supposed to be part of the two million jobs that have been created, the young people who say, oh, we have worked, but we have not been paid, the young people who were promised permanency by no less a president, a person than the president, they say, Bosu, are you not aware? You cannot say you are not aware, Mr. President. You cannot say that. The young people are asking a very simple question. Pay us our money or lose our votes. Do you have the money? Pay them. If you don't have the money, explain to them. If you are not able to pay to them, apologize to them. And they say within 7 to 14 days, they are talking about the elections. Maybe they won't say it directly, but they are talking about the elections. And elections have consequences. And we all know that. So pay them their monies. Because when the government changes hands, there's no way those monies will be paid to them. And it will be a blot on the government. So Dr. Baumia, please, good morning to you, Alaji. Redeem your image. Dr. Nyas, redeem your image. And President Kufo, they say, please, counsel, 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 counsel Dr. Baumia. Counsel Dr. Baumia to change from his old ways and get into new ways. I leave it here. Have a good morning. Please call me 055-924-2717 and 055-691-0154. 055-924-2717 and 055-691-0154. Wherever you are in the country, call me. Let's have a conversation.